Hey, it's Hayato with Android Central, and OnePlus makes some of my absolute favorite phones on the market. From the build quality and the design to the software, these are pretty fantastic phones for just about anybody. So we wanted to make this quick video guide showing off helpful tips for setting up a OnePlus phone of your own. Now, a few things before we start. This is mostly focused on OnePlus devices, but a lot of these tips carry over to other types of phones as well. And just because I set up my phone this way doesn't mean you need to do yours exactly the same way. This is hopefully just to give you some new ideas. So right now we're looking at the OnePlus 8. This is my main phone that I use every day. Uh, it's got Android 10 with Oxygen OS, which is my favorite software build of Android. Um, and one of the first things I do whenever I set up a new OnePlus phone is take advantage of this little switch over here that lets you change between different audio profiles. So if we jump into the settings, and tap on buttons and gestures, then alert slider, you get different settings for each individual profile of your audio slider. So you're pretty limited here in terms of what you can actually change, but I do like to jump into the ring settings and make sure that vibrate for calls is enabled because otherwise by default, the ringtone will go off when you get a phone call, but the phone's not gonna buzz in your pocket. So if you're somewhere loud like a concert, you're totally gonna miss that phone call. Another thing I like to enable is in the silent setting, make sure that uh, mute media volume is on. Uh, something I really like about that switch is if I'm, say, playing a game or if I'm scrolling through Instagram and some video decides to autoplay, you know, even if I'm in silent mode, by default, that's just gonna play at full volume. If you uh, switch this up to silent mode with this setting enabled, that's just gonna automatically mute any music, any sort of multimedia right away just alongside your notification tones. While we're in the buttons and gestures settings, there's a few other things I like to enable. Over here in navigation bar and gestures, if you don't already have the new Android 10 navigation gestures enabled, I really recommend it. You can switch back to the old three button layout that older Android phones use, but navigation gestures are super convenient, especially for that back gesture on either side of the screen. I'm a really big fan of that. And I also like to enable this hide the bottom bar. You can see this little line at the bottom of the screen. You can just hide that. It doesn't really do anything for you other than give you a visual cue. Uh, for me, I don't need that, so I'm happy to get rid of it. One last thing while we're in here is the quick gestures. Now, I don't really use a lot of these, but they are kind of nice to have. You can flip your phone when, you, when you're getting a phone call to uh, automatically mute the ringtone. Three finger screenshot, you know, look at that, it took a screenshot. It's nice. Uh, something I really do like is the double tap to wake, which is pretty self-explanatory. When the screen is off, you can tap it twice to wake it, tap it again to turn the screen back off. I really, really like that. Uh, and then something that OnePlus has been doing for a long time on its Oxygen OS software is uh, these little letter shortcuts where you can draw a letter uh, with the screen off to instantly launch an app. So if I just tap on something like Draw V, for example, you can scroll down. At the very top, there's a few different uh, predetermined shortcuts. You can open your camera, open the front camera, and so on. Uh, and then you can open any app you want. Maybe if I tap Street Easy, um, you can see it'll just launch the app, or you can choose any of these shortcuts within the app. It gets really granular. I really like that. So you can see if I turn the screen off and just draw a V on the screen, it'll have to unlock first, of course, but right away it launches into Street Easy and I can start looking at apartments. Now, something else I really recommend doing on a OnePlus phone as soon as you set it up is enabling dark mode. Not just because it's easier on your eyes, but also because it's easier on your battery. Pretty much every OnePlus phone has an AMOLED display, which means that whenever pure blacks are being shown, that part of the screen is actually turned off. So it can lead to some fairly significant battery savings. If we jump into the settings and hit customization, uh, you can choose from the preset themes and I'm using nuanced dark, which puts you right into that dark mode. Um, and while we're in here, you can actually change a lot of things about the software. So you can change the clock style for the always on display. You can change that little animation that plays under your thumb with the fingerprint sensor. Uh, and then once you scroll down here, uh, this is sort of something that you see in a lot of Android phones these days. You can change things like the accent color. Maybe you don't like this blue, uh, you'd rather have something punchy like this red. And you get a preview with both dark mode and this light theme, which is pretty nice. You can also change the shape of the icons in your notification shade. You can change the rest of your icons with an icon pack. And you can even change your font if you'd like, since OnePlus includes its Slate font along with the default Roboto. Now, if you've got a newer OnePlus phone like the 8 or the 8 Pro, you can also take advantage of the high refresh rate display. That one's pretty easy to enable if it's not already on by default. Just jump into the display settings, tap on advanced, and tap refresh rate. 
Now on the OnePlus 8, you can choose between 60 hertz and 90 hertz. On the OnePlus 8 Pro, you can go all the way up to 120. Now, if you ask me, the difference between 90 hertz and 120 hertz is pretty minimal, but anything above 60 really is noticeable. The downside is that it does take a toll on your battery life, but the OnePlus 8 has such good battery life that it really isn't a big deal to me. Another tweak that will really depend on what OnePlus phone you're carrying is what's sitting to the left of your home screen. So on newer phones like the OnePlus 8 and the 8 Pro, you swipe over here and you get the Google feed just like on a Pixel or pretty much any Android phone these days. But if we switch out to the OnePlus 7T, swiping left of the home screen instead shows the OnePlus shelf. Now, this has been retired in newer OnePlus phones, but I really do like this feature. It's essentially just a place to store any of your widgets that you'd like. So it comes with a few preset options, a step counter, a toolbox, and so on. You can add a parking widget that lets you take a picture of your car or even mark its location with GPS, which is super nice. You can also jump into the settings cog and add other widgets, pretty much anything on your phone. If you wanna put maybe a Google Calendar widget or a widget for your password manager, it's really all up to you. Now, one last thing I like to do on pretty much any phone I'm setting up is something that most people probably won't wanna do, which is change the screen calibration. So if I go back into the display settings, tap in advanced again, the very first option is for screen calibration. Now, I'm really not a fan of the super punchy, vibrant color profiles that come by default on these phones. Um, instead, I really like the natural color profile. I think OnePlus did a great job with its colors on the OnePlus 8's display. So natural really shows that off without trying to color it too much. This is always one of the first things I do on every new phone. And if you really wanna get specific with it, you can tap on advanced and really get picky with things like an adjustable color temperature slider or the industry standard display P3 and sRGB color gamuts. So that's how I set up the OnePlus 8 that I use every day. But again, these are just helpful tips for you to set up your phone however you'd like. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any tips of your own. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you next time.